Morning to the cloud. Okay, welcome everybody to our eighth executive lounge. So uh, quite a fun one tonight. We're gonna be taking a look at migrations, uh, as you all know. So I'm gonna demo a few things. I'm gonna show off tools and more. Uh, if I take a look at what we're gonna cover, I'm gonna go through some of the key benefits um, that you can explain to your clients as well for migrating. So it's not just a, a negative of, oh, we have to migrate off of BC. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the three migration methods. Now, I've spoken about a lot of the methods and tools before, um, but we've sort of fragmented them across four or five different webinars. So we've, we've collated them all into one, uh, and we've got a whole new bunch of documentation that I'll show you later as well, um, which should streamline things, and they've all got hyperlinks uh, to make life easier. So uh, we sort of put everything into these three methods, which I'll sort of talk you through tonight, and I'm going to demo certain bits too. Uh, and then uh, finally, we will take a look at Q&A. So some of you have submitted questions, so we'll take a look at that. And we've also got a bit of a, um, a preview of some new plans and a, and a partner deal later on as well, uh, which we'll take a look at. So first of all, let's take a look at some of the benefits to migrating to SiteGlide. Uh, now we've spoken about these a few times before in different, different webinars, um, but we'll, we'll go through them here as well. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have the options. So as I said, tonight we'll go through the three migration methods. So uh, these methods have come from um, both partners and also ourselves looking at the new tools that we're developing and going, okay, well, how do we streamline these and make things as efficient as possible? Uh, and how do we give you the flexibility uh, to make decisions while you're migrating to? So uh, really it's going to be selecting the method that best suits you and your client so that you can get the best for them um, rather than just doing what you what you need to do. Uh, the second, of course, is platform. Uh, so SiteGlide runs, of course, off of Platform OS. Uh, so we have an underlying core in infrastructure that you can utilize, and we've not just copied BC like for like. So this is a reimagined infrastructure um, with the focus being on speed, flexibility, um, reliability, and performance. Um, I'll touch on a little bit more of that later as well. Uh, but that means we can also innovate. So rather than uh, picking a platform that uh, ticks all the boxes for now, but is very big and kind of uh, can't, can't pivot very quickly or keep up to, uh, with the latest best practices and, and coding and so on, uh, we're able to innovate in that way because of the way this core infrastructure is, uh, is built. So we will be able to integrate any new technologies that come along the way and pass along those benefits to you without you needing to understand the core uh, code uh, and, and get too stuck in if you don't want to. Uh, and of course, uh, the core platform also provides the um, increase in page speed improvements and SEO scores, et cetera, that you're all familiar with. So let's take a look first at uh, migration tools, because we've brought out a few over the past uh, past year. So we'll take a look at the tools available now that you can use to streamline your migrations. So the first is CLI. Uh, so many of you uh, will have been using this already. We're going to do a little bit of a demo of this this evening. So for those of you who haven't used it yet, we'll show you how to get set up, which commands you can run to get started. Uh, but this includes, of course, sync so that you can have an FTP FTP like experience whilst being secure. Uh, you can use it to bulk import assets, and you can also use it to import and migrate sites. Next, we have database import tools. Uh, so you're able to import uh, modules, including um, CRM uh, and events and so on, uh, as well as web apps uh, too. Uh, and you can do that all with just a few clicks. So I'm going to show you one uh, this evening that we've shown before in a previous webinar where you can do a bulk import of web apps and things like that. Um, but there are also options to do it individually with CSV or if you're migrating from a platform that is not BC, uh, how do you start getting data into SiteGlide? Uh, is it possible? What kind of things do you have to look at? We'll, we'll take a look a little bit later on. And third is Toolbox. So generally just the UI. So for some, uh, Liquid in particular, uh, in particular has been something that's reasonably new. Uh, BC started to implement it, but never really finished it. Um, uh, and the core architecture that we're based on uses Liquid uh, far more than BC ever did. So 
we have integrated things into the UI, such as toolbox, so that you don't need to relearn an entire code base just to get started. You can point and click and it will generate the code for you. Um, and then next is Studio by Cyclide. So we showed this uh, last webinar. Uh, so it's a reasonably new tool. And I'll do a little bit of a demo of this as well. I won't go into as much depth as we did the last time. Uh, you can check out previous webinars for that. Um, so this allows you to take an opportunity to rebuild a site uh, using best practice code uh, without starting from scratch. So it's a sort of middle ground rather than doing a, a like for like exactly as it is, I get to uh, update the site and future proof it. Uh, so this consists of the studio module. This is something you would in install on your site. Uh, and that in contains the Bootstrap 4 along with some other code files as well, uh, which is the underlying library. Then we have the layout library from Studio. Again, we'll take a look at this shortly, where you get to select different layouts to build a wireframe of a site and progress from there. So as I said, you don't start from scratch. And then we have Visual Page Builder uh, 2, which means you can drag and drop and edit content. Uh, so we'll take a look at that in a bit. Whoops, sorry. There we go. Quite sure what happened there, apologies. Okay, and then we have Static Site Importer. Uh, so this is a tool that's been around a while. I'm sure many of you have uh, heard about it before. And um, we're gonna be demoing this a little bit tonight as well. Uh, so this allows you to migrate any site into SiteGlide. Um, so whether it be BC or WordPress or any other platform, it will allow you to migrate those in. And because you don't just have to do BC sites, we found that partners have been able to win new projects because of it. You can quickly demonstrate an, improve, uh, an, Im an improvement in performance and SEO, et cetera, um, with very little work. Uh, so the importer, of course, optimizes all of your assets. So your JavaScript, your CSS, along with your images. So it will reduce those down, make them optimal best practice for uh, loading in a browser. And it allows you to add value on top over time. So one of the methods we're gonna take a look at this evening uh, is a method where you simply import the site and put it live. Um, and then over time, as budget allows or as the client would like, you can then start integrating it with more of the site live features rather than doing it straight away. So first of all, we're gonna take a look at a demo for the like for like methods. So as I've mentioned, this is importing a site as it is without doing too much work to it at all. So there's a couple of options you can go with here. We can either import it and put it live immediately, uh, or we can import it and begin integrating it into some of the features and functionality of SiteGlide to benefit the client more. So we'll dive into this one first. There we go. Uh, so first of all, we will want to create our new site to import a site to. So if I have an existing live site on any other platform, all I need to do first is create a site on SiteGlide. And you can see we have a nice UI here uh, that is brand new uh, to make this a little bit more simple to understand. So where do you create a site, for example? So now, rather than having to go to one of two places, all you need to do is look at your welcome uh, screen and you can start building straight away. And you'll be presented with three options. Now, the first is create a site using starter site. Uh, so this tends to be a demo site. I've shown it in pretty much all of the other webinars where you get pre-built site with uh, integrated functionality into uh, modules and so on, so that you can have a play around. Uh, the second is with Studio. So it hasn't got all of starter site in there, so it's not gonna bloat you up in terms of modules and features, but it does have that underlying uh, module for the Bootstrap 4, et cetera, so that you can use Studio if you'd like to. We'll circle back, circle back around to that a bit later. And then third is build a custom site. So when you're looking to import a site using static importer, you want to use a custom site because we don't want anything else on there. The CSS is already set up, the JavaScript, the assets, it's all already on the site. So I'm gonna click build a custom site and then I can give it a name. Uh, so uh, let's call it uh, number 11. And you'll notice that these selections are already off for me uh, because I'm building a site from scratch. So if I click create site, it will then spin it up automatically in my agency. 
And if I would like to, I can watch a little demo video as well uh, to help get started. That's more for partners coming onto the platform who perhaps aren't as familiar as, as some of you. Uh, so I'm going to close this here. Now, I did make one earlier, um, just for speed of the demo. So if I scroll down, I can see um, my import 10 site here. Now, at the moment, if I click view, it's got nothing on it. So this is what we'd call a uh, uh, an empty site. This is only spinning up a website uh, using Platform OS, uh, and it's got no other code uh, inside it. So the next thing we want to do is find a site that we want to import. Now, I've done a demo earlier, but I'm, I'm going to flick across to a live site here. We've used this example before. Now, I quite like using this one because for demo purposes, it's quite a small site, which means the import tool won't take a huge amount of time to run. Uh, so if you have a site with hundreds and hundreds of pages and many gigabytes of assets, it will take a bit longer for your computer to process that import. Uh, so rather than sitting here for a few minutes with everyone watching a loading screen, I'll use a small site. So I have a folder set up already uh, on, my, uh, on my desktop. And we can see that there's nothing in there apart from a config file. Um, I think I'll remove that. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that in there for now, just so that I don't have to re-enter my password, etc. So what we want to do first is open terminal. So to do the static site import myself, uh, rather than using another agency in the community, I'm going to need to use the CLI. So if I come to the help docs and do CLI introduction, There we go, introducing the SiteGlide CLI. So this is a document with a list of commands, uh, everything you could ever want to know about setting up uh, the CLI and also running different commands and functionality within it as well. So obviously I've already set CLI up on my system, but I'm gonna go through a few of the steps for you. Uh, now you should be aware that there are two videos here. So there are some specific um, files that you'll need to set up depending on which system you're running. Uh, I won't go through all of those now because it's not gonna be applicable to everybody watching, but I'm gonna go through the key steps. So whether you already have SiteGlide CLI installed or you don't and you're doing it for the first time, you will want to start with installing the SiteGlide CLI. Now, all of the commands are listed as we can see. So all I'm gonna to need to do, if I move zoom out of the way, is copy this command and paste it into my uh, terminal over here and hit enter. And this is going to run and it's going to go and find the files for the CLI and install it on my machine. Now, I've already done it. So effectively, it's trying to update for me to the latest version, uh, which I'm on. So we'll just wait a second for that to complete. It doesn't take very long. So this is going off to uh, uh, effectively a GitHub repository to pull down all of the latest files. And uh, now I will also note that I have something called NPS installed. So you'll notice just above in here, it's, uh, uh, sorry, NPM. Um, so there's a link in the document where you can go and install that as well. It doesn't take very long. You just click over here and download the LTS version. That again, automatically installs. Uh, okay, so I'm all installed. So next, what I'm going to do is just follow it down. So the first one I want to do is create an environment on my computer. So I have a folder and I have the CLI installed, but I've got no way to know which site I want to connect to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to copy this add command to create an environment. Now it's got some dummy data in here. So I'm gonna start removing some of this. Uh, let's just remove this and let's go back over here. And I'm going to use the site that I'd already had. So I'm going to copy this URL into there. So that defines the site. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is change the URL. Uh, so it should be like this. Uh, bear with me. I'm just going to pause and pull up the password for that as well, because I'll need that shortly. Okay, good stuff. So if I resume, uh, so the final thing I want to do before I carry on is give the environment a name. So you can create multiple environments 
for the same site. So I could, for example, have a staging version of this site and a production version, and I could want to switch between the two. So I'm just going to remove this and call it staging for now, uh, because it is, in fact, a staging site. So that's it. I'm going to hit enter. And then it's going to ask me for my site guide password because it needs to know that I can connect and I'm, I have the, the, the rights to connect to this site. So it'll go off and just authorize that. There we go. Job done. So let's head back to the docs, which are over here. So what we want to do is use the static site import tool. So for, ex uh, so for anybody who doesn't know, let's take a look at the landing page. The static site tool will automatically go ahead and spider and scrape the website uh, that is live already. And it will download it to my machine and then redeploy it to the site live website. So it will automatically put any pages it can find that are not private or secure into pages on SiteGlide, along with all of the assets, so images, CSS, JavaScript. And while it does it, uh, it can also optimize the asset files too. Um, so because it's on AWS, you're pretty much guaranteed to see a speed improvement by moving it over, but also by optimizing those assets, um, many of which will have been uploaded by clients, for example. Um, we will see a page speed and SEO score improvements here uh, as well. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna scroll down to the migrate command and I'm gonna copy this command in, oh no, I'm not, sorry, bear with me. So at the moment I'm uh, in terminal, but I'm just on my core, uh, on my home folder. So I'm gonna do a CD into um, that folder that I, my project is in, which is neutral one, and I'm going to hit enter. Now I can paste in the command, and I need to put the URL of an existing site in. So I'm going to use this tactical live site, um, which is over here. Just let him in. There we go. So I'm going to paste that URL in, and then I need to name the environment. So I've just I've just made the environment, and I called it staging, like that. So that's it. All I'm going to do now is hit enter. And I'm going to go yes. And that will start downloading the site. So if I switch over while that's running in the background, I'll go to one that I did earlier. I've used it on previous demos, which is on, um, let's just refresh that page. There we go, which is on SiteGlide. So I have a site over here called Testing 4. And all I've done on this site, apart from use it for demos, is run the import to the site. So if I come into pages, we can see the home page here. It's quite a small site intentionally. Uh, it's got no template applied. And what it's done is grabbed everything it can find on the page and dumped it into the page on site guide. So we can see the full head uh, along with the menu uh, and also the footer in the bottom of the page too. And we can see actually, if I scroll down through the page, all of the assets are here and they're working um, along here, uh, along with uh, form excuse this one, it was for some testing. So this is the form that was on the live site. So if I scroll down the live site, we can see that it all looks very similar. Uh, and we also have the form in here uh, as well. Uh, okay, so that is effectively uh, the first migration method, which is a like for like and then go live. So the site that I've imported, this form will work so if I was to fill it out, I'd receive an autoresponder and it all works within the page and it's all static HTML in here. So if a client would like to move it over and they don't care about anything else, they don't really use the admin um, and this is the approach you wanna go with, you can run that import tool, check it for any errors or anything that might have missed in terms of uh, buried asset levels, for example, some uh, buried files in JavaScript files, et cetera, uh, and then go live. So that is the first method. The second method is very similar, but it's where I start to integrate the imported site into some of the site live features before I put it live. So for example, that form along with maybe some page templates, et cetera. So I'm just gonna quickly go through a couple of those. Uh, I won't go through the whole thing. So the first one is that I don't have a page template, which means at the moment, if I wanted to, so if I come over to templates here, I have, I have none. So if I wanted to add some new pages, I would have to copy and paste or uh, rewrite a lot of code uh, just to get a page up and running. So not ideal, and it wasn't how it was set up on BC. 
So if I come into the page, I can copy all of this. I can go, whoops, there we go. I can copy all of this from above. So I'm gonna copy the header out and delete that. And I'm just gonna open templates in a separate tab while I'm here. Um, and then I can scroll down past the page content uh, to, we've got the contact form here. and the callback, and then we come to the footer as well. So I'm gonna head over to this templates page. Let's create a new one. And I'm gonna call it main template. Now this liquid tag will call out, of course, the content for the page. So any page that I apply it to, this is where all of that content will be, at, will be outputted. So I'm gonna put it above that for the header. And then of course, below that, I want to put the footer. So if I come back to my page, I'll just copy all of this delete it from the page. I'm gonna save the page and paste that into the template, just like that. Okay, and that's saved too. So if I come back to the page now, this is the Cyclide site and refresh, we'll find that everything breaks and all of the CSS and assets and JavaScript, all of that is gone now uh, because I've removed it from the page, but I haven't applied the page template. So if I come back to this page and refresh, so that it discovers the file I've just created. Okay, so I can come to here. I can select the template that I've just made, hit save when zooms out the way, there we go. And then I can refresh on the page and everything looks as it should. So that's the first one, pretty basic, but it means that we can scale the site more easily moving forwards. So it will save me as an agency time uh, as well. Uh, the next, as I mentioned, would be uh, forms. So we have a static form in here and we can see that uh, one of my team has been doing some testing forms above. Uh, if I come back to the page, I can head over to forms and I can create a new form on the site containing all of the fields that are on there. So rather than being static HTML, I can begin putting these features into the UI itself. So we've got name and email address along with your message. So we've got name, email address, or default fields. So all I need to do is your message here. And we'll do a multi-line, give them a bit of space. And uh, let's make that required as well. Uh, and hit save. Whoops, give it a name. Uh, home contact one, let's do that. Uh, let's just go to the, to the root. So when I hit save, it will take a moment, particularly for the first time, because in Cyclide, we have a lot, uh, we've built on top of forms uh, significantly more than uh, platforms like BC did. So you'll notice we have secure zones, for example, which allows you to create a completely custom form with any number of fields that you want and make it a sign up form as well. So you can collect any kind of information that you would like when someone's signing up to a secure zone on your website or starting a subscription with you, et cetera. Uh, we've also integrated the payments directly into custom forms. So again, ask them anything you would like in the form and then have them check out or um, submit a single um, fixed fee or a quote only, et cetera. And then we also have autoresponder workflow and the recapture uh, V2 and V3. So next what I'll do is just come back to my page. And on the home page, uh, you can see where this is going. Um, if I scroll down, we will see a static form. There we go. And of course, uh, just above, we'll have the form for the, that one of my team have put in. But what I'm going to do is just put it in uh, just above the form uh, tag that's there, for an example. So I can use the toolbox, as I mentioned earlier. I don't need to relearn the liquid. I can head off and find uh, home contact one and just use the default layout for now and then save changes. Okay, so if I come back to my page, we will see it obviously just above here. There you go. So default form has been outputted. And of course we're missing the CSS. Now that will be, be mainly because of the classes on the fields. So next what I want to do is integrate these class names uh, such as this. Uh, and the container items as well into my form layout. So I won't do the full thing uh, and, and have you all watch, but what I'll do is I will go into code editor and I'll show you where you can do this. 
so that you can begin integrating. Oh, look, I've got it open. So let's go to the form I've just created. It's automatically created the file in my code editor and it's automatically created the default file that we've seen on the homepage. So what I can do is create a new file called custom. And hit save. And I can copy to start with all of the code from the default file. Now this contains the liquid tags, et cetera, that are required for the form to run and integrate into the site wide form. So that's important first step. The next one is looking at the classes on the page or in a file if you have it on your computer and then starting to copy these over and replace the structure of the HTML in the form layout. Um, so if I come back to here, for example, um, this uh, wrapper, for example, around the form, I would replace the classes with the classes that I've got on, on the front end there. Uh, the next uh, one that we'll probably want to look at, uh, as will many of you, is the main menu. So rather than needing to go into code and uh, um, make a longer job of updating the menu, what we can do is come into the module and create a menu that we can use. So we've created a few on this site already. And I can then begin adding the pages and I can use the drag and drop to move the, the, the fields around and fully customize. And again, you would follow the same process as you would for forms. So once you've created a menu, you'd come to code editor, um, we go to modules and uh, menu, and we can start editing the files here. And you'd follow the same process. So you would edit the classes in the list, for example, to match your menu. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so the other thing to mention is that the static import tool, you'll notice that I haven't had to edit any of the assets. The JavaScript's all worked, the CSS, CSS has all worked, and that's because you will notice that all of the path names have been rewritten for me. So all of the sites on SiteGlide uh, have their assets stored on a global CDN. I'm sure all of you watching live know, the, know this already. Um, so they're all st stored on a global CDN with edge servers around the world. So when a visitor comes to the site, they'll, get the, they'll download the file from the one that's closest to them, which improves the page speed and performance that they receive. So if we were to come into the back end of this uh, site into the page, actually, sorry, no, we've moved it. If we come into the template that I've moved them to, you'll have noticed earlier that we have uh, liquid tags here. So this is all done for you automatically by the import tool. And it means that your CSS and, X and everything works automatically. Uh, so that's another thing that you don't need to worry about. So once you've finished integrating, um, you can get ready to go live. One final thing that we want to look at for those who have sites that are not static is data. So how do we begin integrating data from BC or any other platform into our site glide site? And uh, so let's take a look at web apps uh, first of all. So let me uh, just go here. So, I have a file set up already. Uh, I've got some demo, uh, or not demo, but I've got some test data that I've been using in the past. And I'm sure many of you have heard us mention them before, but there is an app made by Karim and his team called BC Exporter. So if you're migrating data from BC and you wanna get your web apps out quickly, you can do using their tool. And they generate a folder for you that looks like this. So I haven't done anything to this. This is exactly what they give you. And it includes a folder of all of the web apps with the CSV data and the JSON for the structure of the web app. And it also contains the categories JSON as well. So if I want to import all of these web apps into my site, I can drag the categories into the web apps folder and then uh, compress this. And then I want to import this zipped file. So just so that um, I don't lose the file in a moment for uh, while I'm recording, I'm gonna move this to the desktop so it's easy to find. So if I come back to my site and we have got a new migration tools area. Well, I say new, it's a couple of months old. And this will outline the steps that I'm about to talk about. So because I've moved the categories folder uh, file into that folder, when I import my web apps, all of the data sources and categories uh, will have maintained their uh, relationships between each other. So we can see on my desktop, I've got this web app zip. 
So I'm just going to click upload like this. And we can see actually in here that I've got quite a few web apps and there are quite a few items in this site as well. Um, okay, that's a bad example. <laughs> let's go to uh, products or let's have a look. There you go. So there's quite a few in each of the web apps. So it's not insignificant. Now, depending on the data, the size of the data that we're importing, it will vary in the amount of time that it takes. Um, but if I just wait another moment or two, I'll then be able to refresh and I should see all of the web apps imported in my site uh, automatically. There we go. And so now all of my web apps that, I, that were in my folder have now appeared in the site along with all of their items. And I haven't uh, used this data set in a while, but let's head to something like portfolio. If I head into an item, I should find that the items are categorized as well. There you go. So this is an item that's categorized to the homepage and we'll see that all of my categories all already exist as well, uh, thanks to that import. So if we come over to the categories area in our CMS, we'll see all of these in here. And if I click on homepage, uh, I can see all of the items that are categorized to it. Uh, so that makes it easier for you to fact check once you've done it, but also manage the data moving forwards. Alrighty. So let's head back. And uh, as this slide suggests, the next method is the studio method. So rather than using um, the import tool to migrate a site as it is, you might want to take the opportunity to improve and update the code on your website while you import it. So many of the sites that we're importing at the moment were built many years ago. And so even you who's built the site have moved a long way since then. And even you are building sites differently today. And of course the industry has moved along and the technologies that we use and best practices have all developed as well. So the first option, as I mentioned is Studio. So we'll do a demo of this now as well. Excuse me. So if I head back up, I can come over to the new Studio website. And Studio has a full layout library of all of the Bootstrap 4 layouts ready for you to start building out your site. Uh, so you can begin wireframing and taking your pick of the layouts available. Um, and then you can customize on top afterwards. So if I come back out of the layout library, I can go into Visual Page Builder uh, to make life a bit easier. I can begin browsing this library and start dragging and dropping and wireframing the new structure of my site and pages before I even put it into site glide. So I can come over to the library here. I can add in content sections or drag and drop. Oops, there we go. So I can start putting in sections like this. Um, and let's put in something like a hero. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, I'll have one of those at the top. Whoops, I put it in the wrong place. So I will move that as well to the top. And in here, we can begin editing the content. So if you have new and revised, uh, just let him in. If we have new and revised copy uh, for the website, we can update that point and click before we've even begun coding, which means if your client just changes their mind and has revisements, et cetera, it becomes much more quick to update those and integrate them into the new project. Uh, so at any time when I'm ready, I can then export this HTML. So I can copy this in. And from this point, we're essentially going to follow a similar process to the one we looked at for importing a site using the import tool. So I effectively have at the moment a full page as code and I can come over to a, a, a new site. So mm, let's go perhaps to, let's go to 50, shall we? I'll edit this one. So this is um, a testing site that I use. Uh, so it has got starter site on there. So if I come to the home page, uh, we can see this. But what I can do is create a new page and not use one of those existing templates. So let's create a page now. And we'll go into Page Builder and just paste in all of the code that we've already copied there. I'm going to give it a name. So Martin Test Page 1. And I'm not going to select a template. I will hit Save. Uh, so, and then obviously, 
There we go. So what we have here is not even called Bootstrap because the page currently has uh, no assets linked to it with a page template. Uh, so it's just the basic HTML. So I'm going to come over and just create a blank template uh, as an example of what you would do on a fresh site. So let's create a new template. And that's it. So I've got Studio included. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, this will include those core bootstrap files, et cetera, that link into Studio. So I'll hit save now. There we go. Uh, now if I, whoops, I need to come back to my page and add the template to that new page. There we go. Save changes. Refresh. And now it looks as it does in Studio. So Studio allows you to create a big wireframe of the, the new site and the new structure. And it means you can very quickly build out the basics of your pages and even introduce client copy before you begin coding and customizing. Now, I won't go into all of the details because we did it in its own release webinar last time. Um, but now that I've got these in here, I can fully customize uh, any HTML, CSS, or even uh, uh, SAS variables that I would like to, uh, particularly from Code Editor. So in, um, in our assets folder, if we come to here, we can go CSS modules and studio, and we have the custom variables file that you will have all seen last webinar, uh, where we can uh, change and adapt the global variables that control the site, such as font, color, font size, title size, button radius, et cetera, all of that's in there. And we also have a custom SAS file uh, as well, so I think I was doing some testing on this by the looks of it. Perhaps it's one I used last webinar, no, I'm not sure. Uh, where I can write my own SAS, file, uh, SAS um, code and have that adapt to the site as I see fit. So that in effect is the second approach. Uh, so that is using Studio to import your sites to SiteGlide. And as I mentioned, you can then from this point, start adding in any of the other uh, integrations that you would like with forms or menus or modules or web apps, and it all follows the same process. Quick check on, uh, on time, okay. And then the final method is fully bespoke. Now there's not a full demo for this one. I'm not gonna create a whole site in front of you. <laughs> Whoops, oh, sorry. So one example actually, before I move on, is from Wizzy, one of our partners in the community. Uh, and they are using this studio method and actually integrating it very closely to how a, a, the site, existing site already looked. So if I just back out of this quickly, I'll head over, I'm conscious of time, but that's fine. So we have um, this site over here, um, Aesthetic Nurse Bar. So this is the site built using these core bootstrap uh, layouts. So if I was to inspect, uh, we can see here we have the section classes that we've seen when we were copying things earlier, and it's fully responsive uh, to uh, like this. There we go. Uh, so this is one that they're using uh, and customizing quite heavily on top of the core, uh, core studio library. And I wonder if I have... Um... No, I don't have the live site to do, draw a comparison, but you can check that out in the last, in the last webinar if you'd like to see more on that. So this is a site that they're migrating and using um, all of these updated best practice code um, benefits um, to improve the experience for the client rather than it being um, a like for like. Okay, and now as promised, the final migration approach is fully bespoke. Uh, so this is where you can start from scratch. So you follow the same process that we followed earlier when doing an import site. We create a site with nothing on it, no studio, no, no anything else. And you, as, uh, you and all your developers can write any code you'd like from scratch using any of the site wide features and functionality um, while retaining all of the benefits of the platform, of course. So this is the full on uh, customization route where you're gonna do a complete redesign, restructure of the site and a complete overhaul of their project to streamline their online presence. Um, okay. So just before I move on, I will highlight that all of these methods now are in brand new documentation. So we didn't have this before. We've released them just this week. I believe it was the 
single biggest release of documentation in a day of the year. Uh, so if I come down to Adobe VC migrations, we can see all of the information that I've been talking about literally step by step, along with all of the backup information, code examples, etc. So if I come into the overview, it explains some of the core tools that I've been going through. And it also search, uh, talks about how you can get started, which type of site you need to create for which method, etc. Um, and also information on the free credits for BC exporter. And then we have the method checklist. So in here, we have all of these approaches. So we have the like for like, the low budget, so import it, put it live, or import it and integrate. And you'll notice that all of these have links off to other places so that you can start going through and going, okay, well, this is great, but how do I actually do this step? What does it look like? Where is it? Uh, we also have the studio approach in here, uh, again, step by step, and the bespoke method as well, along with some relevant um, key, key steps that you'll want to make sure that you achieve while building your bespoke project. So we'll include a link to this after the webinar in the, in the email for the recording, uh, but you can come out and check out all of these steps in the help documentation right now. So you can see there's quite a few uh, that have been released in this new section. Okay, so uh, next up is questions from, from you guys. So question from Grant, how well does Cycle I deal with migrating a BC e-commerce site? Good question. So it depends uh, which way you'd like to do it. Uh, so the answer is very well, <laughs> but there are a couple of different methods that you can take to do it. So for example, you could do a combination of the approaches that we took tonight or, or the, you know, the integration approach. So if you would like to not redesign the website, you could use the static site import tool to pull all of the pages across. And then you could do a data import of all of the products. So if I just back up uh, here and head into my site and scroll down to e-commerce, we have products here. And we're able to then import the products uh, and product attributes is coming a little bit soon as well. So if you do have attributes and, and complex relationships, uh, that's coming very soon. Uh, so we can use CSV files to import any of the data. Now, this also applies to any sites that are not just from BC. So if you have something on WordPress, for example, you'll be able to, as long as you can get the data out into some kind of spreadsheet, uh, you'll be able to import that into Cyclide uh, as you see fit. Now, we were actually talking to partners um, in our community last night, yesterday, and one of the partners came up with a suggestion particularly as they're looking at using the import tool to migrate WordPress sites and win projects. How do you get the data out? And one of the tools that they found that works well for them is Web Scraper. So it's a Chrome extension. And you can use this tool to generate all of the pages and you can select which area of the page you'd like to, to, to collect uh, and then have that put it in, into a spreadsheet for you. So there are loads of tools online that can help you streamline your workflows. It doesn't matter if you're migrating from VC or anywhere else. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, good stuff. So then the next question is, oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, any plans to implement a photo gallery module uh, from Bob there? And good question. So uh, no, we don't have any plans to integrate a photo gallery module. Um, primarily because, as I mentioned uh, earlier, our core architecture that we're basing all of this on is far better than the BC version. So in BC, modules were entirely different to web apps and CRM and forms, et cetera. Whereas on Cyclide, they're all built using that same architecture. So when you create a web app, you are in effect creating something that is very similar to a module. The only difference is a module has fields that we have predefined and then we've locked it. Uh, and by the way, that's due to change imminently. So there is an alpha release that some of our advisory board members are playing with at the moment that allows you to add custom fields to modules too. Uh, so no, we won't add a, a, a gallery module, um, but you can do this yourself using those web apps. You can create the custom fields and then you could use the CSV approach that, we that I showed just a moment ago to import any data that you'd like to. Um, and then from, um, from Lewis, so we have, does it exist do, uh, yeah, it does exist, the Google Sandbox, and if yes, how can a site exit to rank? So I, th I think what you might have meant by this question, I hope I'm right, 
<laughs> is uh, how do we get rankings on Cyclide and are they good? Uh, so applying those best practices that you might learn from, from Google resources, et cetera. Uh, so the platform is capable of reaching 100 out of 100 on Google page speed scores uh, from the get-go. So we do absolutely nothing to block your um, potential for reaching those top scores. It will then come down to how you optimize the pages, et cetera. Uh, and also when you launch a site um, or, or create a site, it has a Google indexing uh, uh, and robots file, et cetera, in the system files for you. Hopefully that helps. Um, should we, I'll keep going to the end and then we'll circle back around to any questions because I'm short on time. Uh, and so just a reminder for anybody who didn't watch our amazing webinar last time, uh, we are now an award-winning platform. So as voted by you, our partners, we are number one in digital experience software platforms for small businesses. Uh, and we've also won numerous awards, including easiest admin, high performer, best support, uh, along with uh, all sorts in terms of uh, relationship management, easiest to do business with, high performer, et cetera, uh, which is fantastic news. So thank you to all who voted. And if you'd like to go and have your say, you can head over and uh, give us a vote. So next up is something new that I'd like to talk about and introduce to you all. Uh, so bear with me one second. So as I mentioned just a moment ago, we have some of, uh, whoops, some of the highest support scores. Now that's not just on G2, that is as rated by you guys within our in, own internal support systems. Um, but we're also growing the amount of features and functionality that we are adding uh, thanks to that core database. And recently we've just updated the platform so that not only agencies can create an account and get started immediately. So as of, um, I think last week, anybody, any business anywhere in the world can sign up and have a site glide account and start creating a site, but they won't see any partner and agency pricing uh, immediately. That, so that, that part will still be protected as we've always said it will be. So due to these changes and due to the, um, the ratings that we have so far, We've been looking at ways of how we can scale and continue to provide the high level of service and also accommodate new, to, uh, new types of partners. So we are looking at introducing new account plans, or, or rather we are introducing new account plans. So these are partner level plans uh, at uh, account level rather than site level. And these will split up some of the existing features and functionality that you guys already receive and don't worry, I'll come on to that in a moment, um, including things like white labeling, the number of sites you can create, uh, how long you get expiry for on the sites, uh, uh, what level of support you get in terms of technical support. Now, all of these things are, or, yeah, quite a few of these things are important in terms of us onboarding businesses as well as just agencies. So for example, how much support do we deliver to those who have very little experience and don't run a digital, digital agency? Um, so, I mean, you can all see the list of things that we're looking at in here. However, we're not taking anything away from you. We have an early adopter offer that's running this month, whereby including anyone up to date and before the end of the month, you will have access to this free forever. So anybody who's already signed up will have access to the business level free forever. Anybody who has one or more sites or one to nine sites will have access to all of the agency features forever. And anybody before the end of the month who has 10 or more sites will automatically have access to the pro level for free forever. Now, for any of you who don't currently have live sites or maybe don't have 10 or plus sites, but are needing to migrate sites off BC, we do also, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, my team, but I believe up, as of tomorrow, you will have an offer available to you in your portal. Uh, where you can purchase the early adopter starter pack. Um, so you've got a, a version of the starter pack that we offered a few months ago um, for the 10 uh, sites, et cetera, which will immediately put you in the pro category. Okay. Excellent. Any questions? I haven't looked at chat, so let's have a quick look. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, if anybody has questions, then yeah, do drop them in the chat and um, we will take a look. Uh, so Barbara earlier asked, can you import data from VC web apps into SiteGlide? Um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, can you import BC, uh, data from BC web apps into site web apps on a starter site once you set up a uh, set up similar web apps? Yes, you can. So Luke's already answered, um, but you can do import and export from any web apps and site glide. Yeah. So if I come back out of the presentation, I'll just quickly show you. So uh, let's go to testing 50. So as I mentioned earlier, this actually has starter site on it already. So it's got all of these layouts uh, and modules installed for me. And if I wanted to, I could create custom web apps instead of importing them. Um, sorry, there we go. So I can come create a new web app and I can add in all of the fields that I might like. So let's just do it now. Oh, I hit save, whoops, need a type. Let's do image, why not? Okay, thank you. And what I'm going to show in a second is, oh, I don't know, is that my internet? I don't know if you guys can still hear me. Yeah, all good. Maybe just refresh. Yeah, I may be stuck. I think this is the site I did an import on, so apologies. Right, let's just refresh there. So we're back in uh, creation. I will add the new field in. Okay, let's hit save and see what happens this time. So this is a test site. I've been editing stuff. So apologies for, for that. Uh, it wouldn't be quite as problematic for you guys. Uh, so I've created a new web app. And I can first come in and create new items in here if I would like as normal, or what I can do is import. Now, I mentioned that we have CSV files. So if I download this and then open it, we will see currently an empty web app. Uh, so we'll see various columns for all of the data and information. Now you should, for most areas of BC, from their UI or more than half <laughs> from their UI, you will be able to export a CSV of your own, and then you can match the columns up. And for any that you can't get out of their UI, what you can do is use BC Exporter, which will give you all of the CSV files that I showed earlier. So for example, web app CSV here, and then you could copy in and match up the columns and then re-import it using the import template to SiteGlide. So you can pretty much do everything uh, that you could want there. Um, cool. So that's particularly useful if you're gonna import site and keep the data but edit the front end, for example, you might uh, might do this method rather than the full on input. Uh, lovely. Any other questions? No, I have answered them all. Excellent. Well, on that note, uh, Luke, anything from you? Anything you would like to add or? I don't think so, no. Um, in, in terms of the offer, um, yeah, you probably had an email about it recently um, and um, you'll start to see messages in, in the UI uh, with, with links for that in the next few days, as well as emails to click through. So um, look out for that, but there'll be yeah more information very soon. In terms of um, improvements, I think um, Martin touched on it earlier, but being able to completely customize modules uh, in the same way that you can as uh, with web apps and doing that on the CRM too is a really, really powerful tool. So um, that's currently in, in alpha being tested by, by our alpha partners, but that's something that um, really opens up quite a, quite a few opportunities. But no, I don't think there's anything else. Um, I think you covered it all. Excellent. Well, with that, we will uh, thank you all for coming. And I hope everyone's well and safe and not uh, stuck stranded anywhere or 
or unwell. And uh, yeah, we will see you all next month for our final webinar of the year. And we will be guest hosting on the Platform West channel there to have a bit of a celebration of everything that's gone in the year and also give you the plan of what's coming next in, in next year. So thank you all for coming, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.